get started. All righty. So module number two, we're going to be covering technical analysis, price momentum, simple divergence. Next, we'll go on to candle interpretation and then market manipulation and market structure. So hopefully by the end of today's module, you'll be able to know how to identify um, divergences between price and momentum and um, see for yourselves how useful that is in identifying reversals before they happen. And hopefully you'll be able to know how to analyze candlesticks and candle bars and know how to interpret what they mean. And also, hopefully you will no longer fall into market manipulators traps by knowing um, how to identify a real market structure versus a fake market structure. So without further ado, all right, price momentum and simple divergence. So remember last training, we spoke about um, the basic indicators and one of them was the RSI, right? So that is basically your momentum. Market momentum equals the net result of buyer power and seller power. All right, so market momentum can shift between two modes and that is either coordinated or out of sync. And that'll make more sense later on. So how we um, measure market momentum is through the indicator called RSI or relative strength index. Okay, so this is what it looks like at the one at the bottom over here. This is what your RSI is, all right? So, as I've briefly touched on in the previous training, um, price action comes in an unfixed scale, right? But then RSI comes in a fixed scale, as you can see over here again, right? It's zero to about 100. And usually what people use RSI for is for checking to see if an asset is in the overbought zone or the oversold zone. All right, and as we've mentioned before, that is not how we use it, because as you can see from this um, screenshot of this chart over here, it is a trending day, right? Price is going up, and as you can see, um, uh, price can go into the overbought zone several times. So if you just use it for that purpose only, that once you think an asset is in the overbought zone, then for sure, according to the RSI, it's going to go down because it's overbought, but that is not the case, right? As we can see over here. So what we use it for is to identify divergences between the price and momentum. Example over here, you've got a obvious downward trend, but if you're to look over here, um, the price shows that price action shows that price is going down while if you're to look at the rsi or the momentum it shows the opposite and this is what we call a divergence so remember a divergence is when um a path separates and goes in different directions right so here we have a divergence between our price action and our momentum so what does this tell us? Price is going down, but then remember, we think of momentum as energy, right? So then there's buyer energy, the momentum, the RSI is telling me that there's buyer energy coming in. So what happens a few candlesticks later? It actually starts going up. All right. So again, we don't use, the reason why we don't use RSI for measuring overbought and oversold zones is because the RSI has a fixed scale and price action comes in an unfixed scale. The overbought and oversold levels is a bad idea, but using it for the purpose of identifying divergences is a good idea. However, it is incomplete because again, contextual trading, you can't just rely on that one thing. You need to have at least two or more techniques that converge at the same point in price. All right. So now we will move on to the meatier part of divergences. So what we saw earlier is an example of a simple divergence. 
Now, this is what we call a fractal vibration. So for those of you who aren't familiar, fractals are patterns that repeat within and outside of themselves. So example over here, you have a simple divergence. And what a fractal divergence means is just a simple divergence within a sim another simple divergence. Okay, so let's break it down. You, this is your price, your momentum, all right? As you can see, price action shows that price is going up. However, momentum fails to um, show the same thing. And this is what you call your divergent territory, all right? And if you were to go to a lower time frame and inspect your um, divergent territory, right? Um, you'll see smaller vectors within your bigger vector, right? The red lines indicate the lower time frame, all right? And then if it shows the same thing, Right? There's another divergence within a bigger divergence. This is what you call a fractal divergence. All right. Uh, I don't know what these examples are. Okay. All right. So let's look at this chart over here. This is gold versus the US dollar in the one hour time frame. All right. So this is just the same thing. This is zoomed in because if it's really zoomed out, we won't be able to see it clearly. So I just zoomed it in. That's the only difference. All right, again, one hour time frame. So remember price, how we um, use price and momentum and divergence is by inspecting their peaks. So this is a peak in price and a peak in momentum. All right, and notice how price, the second peak in price is a lower high, but then momentum shows tells us something else, right? And momentum, it shows us a higher high than the previous high. All right, so what do we do to inspect the fractal divergence? We go to a lower time frame. So this now here is the 15 minute time frame of the same area, right? So then we inspect our divergent territory and we find the same thing. There is again a divergence. So what do we call this? This is a fractal divergence right here. All right. So let's go back to the higher time frame. All right. And we see what actually happens is price actually started going up. Right. But we always have to remember contextual trading. So just because we spot a fractal divergence or a simple divergence, that is not enough for us to decide to open a trade alone. So the reason um, why that actually happened, if we're going to go to a bigger scale for our chart, we draw our support resistance line, right? That circle, the white circle is um, the area that we analyzed earlier. So I just zoomed out, drew support resistance lines, and now we go back into the one hour time frame. Right, so as you can see, this would have been a good opportunity for a long because now you have your fractal divergence combined with the fact that price has actually hit a support line. So now you've got two of your techniques um, possibly telling you that price is going to reverse and that is what actually happened, all right? So moving on to handle interpretation. So while the concept of um, price momentum divergence is still fresh in your mind, we will start by talking about the fractal bar. But before that, um, when you guys go out and learn about trading on your own, um, there are some teachings that uh, have to do with candlestick patterns, with you memorizing candlestick patterns. Just take everything you learn with a grain of salt, all right? Price action reading should be organic. All right. So the fractal bar. The fractal bar is all about the precise relationship between price peaks and momentum peaks. And it is a way to spot a second degree fractal divergence in one bar and one time frame only. All right. So 
as you um, get more experience and get better at analyzing, it is very um, hassle to switch between your several time frames, right? So what we would like to eventually be able to do is do all our analysis in one time frame only. And the fractal bar helps us with that in the sense that with one time frame and within one candlestick, we can identify a fractal divergence. How do we do that? It's through an offset. So basically this is your price, right? And there is an alignment, right? Between your price, your momentum and your candlesticks. So this is what, what it looks like if there is a zero offset. So this is completely normal. Price and momentum are in synchrony with each other. However, right, if there is a fractal bar, what that looks like is price will show it like this going up, right? But then the momentum will have an offset in the alignment. Okay, that's, I know that might be unclear. So let's just look at some more examples. All right, you have your price going like this. And this here is the offset, right? So basically, if price was going back up, it would show it like a um, like a straight line like this, right? But then instead, it does an offset before it goes up. So that is what we call an offset. Um, let me just undo this. Okay. So this is your offset between the price and momentum peak. And this here will be your fractal bar. All right. So example, let's draw a line because it's all about the alignment, right? Over here, you see prices going up, but instead of just going this way in your momentum, right? The momentum actually shows an offset as you can see over there. So this here is your fractal bar. The fractal bar doesn't come in a specific shape, in a specific body size, in a specific width size. So the only way you can identify your fractal bar is through the offset between the momentum and your price. Again, this is what it looks like. All right. So moving on to the more basic um, analysis of candlesticks is your volatility. Volatility basically just means the candle body, right? So candlestick X is more volatile as compared to candlestick Y, but candlestick X is less volatile compared to candlestick Z. So that is your volatility. Your shape interpretation now. So, so um, you've got your candlestick body and the wicks or the tails are the sticks that poke out at the top or at the bottom, all right? So this is subjective to each candlestick and it's relative. You always compare your candlesticks to the candlesticks around it. All right, so let's take a look at this example. Remember, we will try to work towards being able to do our analysis within one time frame only, rather than switching between several time frames because that is a bit of a hassle. So, example over here in one time frame, we should know what goes on when a candlestick looks like this, All right? So let's dissect it. Looking at this candlestick with a um, mid-sized candle body and extremely unusually large upper and lower um, wicks or tails, right? So what actually goes on? We dissect it by looking at it in a lower time frame. Okay, so within this is what occurs in that one candlestick, right? So what does it tell you? That the sellers um, actually had some power at first, right? And then the buyers still won at the end, which is why over here, right upon the opening of the candlestick, there were a lot of sellers, as we saw over here. But the buyers still won, which is why, which is why 
the candlestick ends up um, being green. All right. The relative position inside or outside. So basically what that means is that the candlestick before it, if it looks like it's able to engulf the recent candlestick, then your recent candlestick is what we will call an inside candle bar. All right. And vice versa for the outside. And last but not least, and quite simply and pretty straightforward, the bar quality. That just basically means whether the candlestick is bullish or bearish. All right, and now we've got the pressure bar. So your pressure bar usually displays one or two unusually large wicks. All right. A large upper wick implies selling pressure, and a large lower wick implies buying pressure. So the candlestick in the middle is a very good example of um, a, a very strong fight between the buyers and the sellers because it's got huge buying pressure and selling pressure at the same time. So let's look at that. Over here, an example in the chart, this is Bitcoin versus USDT one hour chart, right? As you can see here, this candlestick has an unusually large wick at the bottom, right? What is the large wick at the bottom? Again, that is buying pressure. So if you notice, actually, after a few candlesticks, price actually starts to go up. Same thing over here. Price continues going up because there is a lot of buying pressure. And over here, you've got two candlesticks with unusually large upper wicks. So now this time you've got a lot of selling pressure and price actually starts going down after that. All right, some more examples. Over here, you've got a candlestick with unusually large upper wicks and that one candlestick that um, has both large upper and lower wicks. All right, and this is an example of the buying pressure. Okay, next. So there's this thing called the hybrid bar. Basically, it is a combination of two or more bar types in one single bar. Again, this is another way. Notice how we're slowly trying to um, analyze things within one candle bar so that eventually we can analyze it within one time frame. All right, so a hybrid bar is a combination of two or more bar types in one single bar. And the interpretation of the bar is also a combination of the individual interpretations of all the bar patterns contained in the single bar. So earlier we learned about um, several interpretations of candlesticks, right? So the hybrid bar is basically a combination of those. So there's a lot of them. Example, over here, you've got a offset in your price, right? So this is a fractal bar. And that candle bar also has a large lower wick. So what does that tell you? It is also a buy pressure bar, all right? Over here, you've got, remember your inside candle, which means it looks like it could be engulfed by the candlestick before it, right? This tells me um, it's a green, it's a, a green inside candle bar, which tells me that the volatility of the buyers is getting weaker, right? And to add on to that, it is also a fractal bar. As you can see, there's an offset in the momentum. And another thing, it's got a larger upper wick, which tells me that there is selling pressure. So see how the interpretation of the three different interpretations of this one candle bar can already give me a lot of information. And so far, all of them point to price reversing because the volatility of the buyers are getting weaker. 
it is a fractal bar, which means that there is a second degree fractal divergence going on in a lower time frame. And there is selling pressure. That means the sellers are starting to come in. So these three interpretations of this one candle bar will tell me that price will go down. And price actually does go down right after that. All right, over here, we've got a fractal bar with a cell pressure, that is also a cell pressure bar. All right, so these are all examples of hybrid bars, right? Basically, they're hybrid bars because they contain more than one of the candle qualities. And that is also how you'll interpret them. All right, another example of a hybrid bar here, you have a fractal bar with a lower, um, a large lower wick, which tells me that there is buying pressure. So this is another example of a hybrid bar. And another one over here, same fractal bar with a buying pressure bar. And you can see price actually does start to go up after that. All right, um, one minute to digest all that before we start touching on to our third topic for today. All right, so this is going to be about market manipulation and um, what we can do about it. So as we know, there are traders all around the world with varying buying, selling power. Um, so you, you've got, um, Jonas has spoken about this before and it's called the Pareto's Principle. So Pareto's principle states that mm, an example in a soccer game, right? You have a whole team of soccer players, but only 10% of the goals are, uh, but 100% of the goals are scored only by 10% of the players. All right. So it's the same with trading, right? You've got, even if you have many retail traders, you've got a small percentage of traders that have of huge amounts of buying and selling power. And by huge, I mean, um, it is significant enough to change the flow and change and significantly affect the, the direction of where price is going on a certain asset, okay? So these um, large players, use it to their advantage to be able to manipulate the market to go to the direction that they um, wish it to go for their own benefit, all right? And how this usually happens is first off the von Ristorf effect. So large traders, they'll increase volatility to induce retail traders to trade a breakout. The von Ristorf is based on that hardwired heuristic that grabs our attention to events that stand out from the mean. Okay, we'll go through an example later. Um, just bear with me as I go through um, what actually happened. So what happens after this breakout of volatility that the large traders induce, it then um, goes into the reverse psychology effect. The large traders will induce traders to one side with a goal of creating a liquidity burst that allows them to get into the market in the opposite direction with unusually large orders, all right? So as you know, with trading, you can't just buy if there is no asset available to be bought, all right? Because um, there's a cap in a certain asset. So what they do, is they will increase volatility in the opposite direction, and then it will um, hit a lot of retail traders' stop losses. Then this will um, create a burst of liquidity, which they can then now buy um, with unusually large orders, all right? So we'll go through this example in a more simple way later on. So what happens at the last part is the bandwagon effect. So the retail traders, after they realized they were wrong about the breakout trade, the retail traders will change the direction so that they get on to the bandwagon to the correct side of the market. 
And this is the final nail in the coffin that helps the large traders position to the direction they intended in the first place. All right, so let's go through an example. Again, the large traders don't do this because they're evil. They just thrive on the unawareness of other traders, right? It's not a fault of the system, but it's a flaw in our perception of it. So once we are aware of this, we no longer um, will fall into their traps. So example over here, right? Let's look at the volume. Volume is pretty quiet, right? And this looks like a consolidation, all right? And price is consolidating, consolidating within this range, all right? What happens after that, as you can see, what happens over here, there's suddenly a large increase in volatility in the buyers, right? And at first glance, this looks like a higher high compared to the previous high, right? So then after a consolidation and when traders um, will see this burst of volatility in the bullish side, they will think, oh yes, price will go up, right? So then they will start placing long positions, but then, what happens after that is the reverse psychology effect. So once the um, large traders um, increase volatility in this direction, and then they use reverse psychology on the retail traders that will think that price will actually go up. But then that is not the direction that the large traders wanted to go, right? So they fool you by increasing volatility. And what actually happened after that price started to go down, then now the bandwagon effect. Once they realized they were wrong, those traders who placed long positions, they will now close their trade and quickly reverse their position and um, instead put in sell orders, right? And this will further, um, further the large traders um, plans because once the retail traders jump into the bandwagon, then price goes lower and it's better for them, right? So I hope you see how that all plays out, okay? So how do we remedy this, right? Basically by being able to identify a solid structure from a fake market structure. All right, so example over here, this is basically your structure in the market as presented by this yellow vector over here. Okay, so you compare your recent high, recent low with your previous low, right? This is an example of a solid structure. Another example over here. Okay, so notice, notice how, right? This high is higher than the previous high, but not just in the sense in price, but the candlestick body actually closes above the previous high, not just the wicks, all right? So this here is another example of your solid structure. On the other hand, your fake market structure will look something like this, okay? Notice how in terms of price at first glance, it looks like it is a lower low, but the candlestick body doesn't actually close below the previous low. This is an example of your fake market structure. Another example over here, notice how price looks like a higher high at first glance compared to the previous high. However, if you're to draw a line from alignment itself, the candle thick body doesn't actually close above the previous high. So this is another example of your fake market structure. All right, so let's go back to that example over there. Over here, so that is exactly what happened over here. Okay, so if we were to look right at this support, uh, this resistance line, and then price um, shoots up and it looks like it is a higher high than the previous high compared, uh, compared in price, but the candlestick body doesn't actually close 
above the previous high. All right. So if you be if you already were able to identify real market structure from fake market structure, you would have known that this was a fake market structure and you wouldn't have fallen into the market manipulator's trap and actually opened a long position, right? So be wary, that is what they usually do. Example, you have a resistance line and you think it's strong. What they'll do is fool you into thinking that price has broken resistance line by actually breaking it, right? But then that is not where uh, the direction of the price is actually going. Okay. Wow, I kind of, I feel like I rushed through the three modules, uh, the whole module today quite fast because I thought you wouldn't have enough time. All right, so. All right, now let's go to look at some examples um, that kind of put to application what we have learned so far, okay? Mm -hmm. So, all right, don't be confused. Let's go through it together. All right, so first, what is going on over here? Price looks like it started to consolidate. This is Bitcoin and at the one hour chart, okay? So price started consolidating and then it started going up, right? So this indicator, this blue line over here is a support line, support and resistance line, all right? So what happened? Price started to go up over here and it is a solid structure, very solid, um, clear strength in the buyers, right? So what happened over here with candlestick number one, as you can see, if you're to compare, um, there is an offset between price and momentum. So what is this? This is a fractal bar, all right? So what I did, I just extended a line um, coming out of candlestick number one's body and extended it, right? This fractal bar. And I just noticed how um, it actually acts as a very accurate and precise support where price actually reversed in the future. So that is an interesting um, quality about the fractal bar. Okay, so again, now we see this is an example of an outside candle bar, right? Price doesn't open beside, um, the candle bar doesn't open right beside this candlestick. It actually opens above it. So this tells me a lot about the buyer's power as shown in its volatility, all right? Price continues to go up over here, all right? And the sellers attempt to lower it, but it's a long shot compared to the previous low. So then this still tells me that the buyers have the power, all right? And another um, candlestick number two over here, if you are to align it with its momentum, that is actually another fractal bar, all right? And I just extended a green line out of the candle body and notice how it acts as a support for price in the future, right? If I were to extend it longer, it would have um, still shown over here as a support, okay? So what happens over here? Continuing um, the power in the buyers, all right? But then in candlestick number three, what goes on over here? As we can see in the pink lines, right? Price shows that price is gonna go down, but momentum shows that price is still going up. So there's still, um, your momentum shows that price, uh, the buyers still have energy. All right, so what happens next? This is the second attempt, or maybe the first attempt of the sellers now to try and win over the power, right? So um, the sellers are starting to come in, right? And price is going down. Still a higher low compared to the previous major low, but then now at this point, you're sort of confused. Has the power gone to the sellers or is are the buyers still um, stronger? Okay. 
So we continue to analyze, right? Over here, the buyers start to come in again and start to bring price back up again, but it failed to do so. And how do we know that the buyers failed to bring back price up again? If we can see, right, it looks like it's about level to the previous high, but as we can see over here, and as we just learned about fake market structures and real market structures, this is a fake market structure because the candle pierces through previous high, but does not actually close above the previous high. So even though the buyers are starting to come in and trying to tell us, oh, I still have power, we can tell that the buyers are actually getting weaker now. All right. And what happens again? The sellers start to come in. But then it looks like the sellers also fail to come in with as much power and close at a um, higher low than the previous low. So at this point, you're still confused. The buyers seem like they are getting weaker, but the sellers, you don't know if they're strong enough to win over the current game. All right. And what else? If we were to... Um, Remember, we learned about um, sloping support and resistance line. So if we drew a line connecting the two highs over here and we extrapolated that line, that gives us a potential range that um, the market price, that price is going to play out in. Okay. So remember, sloping support resistance lines gives you new angles that aren't so obvious in the market. For example, if we were just to draw them horizontally, we wouldn't be able to um, actually catch or have more precision. Okay, so when we open the chart, this is what it was showing. All right, so what do we do? We've got um, fake market structure telling us that the um, buyers are getting weaker. All right, and we've got um, over here. Okay, so notice over here in this area, it took the sellers two candlesticks to bring price down, that it took four candlesticks for the buyers to bring up. So that also tells me that the sellers are getting stronger. All right, so now I've got two, um, two, two of my techniques telling me that price might go down and my support resistance lines. It has reached a resistance, right? As I've drawn over here. So that is my third technique telling me that there's going to be a possible reversal and price is going to go down. So what I'll do, I will open a short. This indicated by this green line over here is my entry point, right? And where would I put my stop loss? My stop loss would be, I'll put it a few pips higher than the extreme high, the most extreme recent high that um, the buyers shown. So this is the most extreme recent high that the buyers shown in candlestick number three. And I would place my stop loss a few pips above that as indicated by this red line over here. Okay. And where would I put my take profit? Okay, so basing on my support line over here, since I've got a support line over here that I consider to be strong as price consolidated at that support line, that is where I will take my profit. Okay, and last but not the least, before I open my trade, I see if it will fit within my one is to three risk reward ratio. And I know for this cycle, we haven't spoken about risk management yet, but for those of you who are already familiar with the one is to three risk reward ratio. Okay. As you can see, this is, um, if I'm not wrong, actually one is to four, which is better because my stop loss is one and my take profit is four. Okay. All right. Let's see how the trade actually plays out. Okay. Um, as you can see, price does respect the sloping support resistance line that we have drawn okay it didn't hit the take profit yet it actually did in the further screenshot but i didn't put it in but as you can see it has very very nicely respected the sloping support resistance line that we drew over here so let's continue the story the buyer started to come in again and started to 
um, win over the situation. But as we can see, once again, it is a higher high than the previous high, but the candlestick bodies don't actually close between the major highs, all right? So, and another thing, the large upper wicks, okay? So the large upper wicks over here and these few candlesticks tell me that within this zone, there are sellers waiting. So I would call this a seller zone, all right? I'm not going to write all of that out. <laughs> so I would call that a seller zone. All right. And notice that is where the sellers actually started coming in. Okay. And price doesn't just drop. Price doesn't drop in like one candlestick. Maybe in high impact news it does. But as you can see, price dropped along our sloping support resistance line. Okay. So this is another emphasis in how sloping support resistance lines can give us angles. To the market in which are obvious at first sight. All right, so let's go through um, one more example about the story in every trade. Um, okay, so all right, so a good practice that I like to do is I write out my analysis, I write out my observations, because it's different when you actually see it in front of your eyes like that. And it's also a good habit to record your trade so that you'll be able to know where you went wrong, because it's easy for you to say, okay, I went wrong because I did this, and with that, it was my cognitive bias, but then when it's just in your head, it's very easy for you to, to forget the mistakes that you made. All right, so what I like to do, I like to record everything. I like to write down my analysis and I like to write down where I went wrong. Okay, so this is an example, all right? So if you were really serious about something, you would be disciplined about your practices too, okay? So this is, um, all right, uh, one hour Bitcoin also, another example of a trade, all right? So I, I drew support resistance line. Okay, and I notice there is a divergence between price momentum over here, as indicated by the orange lines. Price is going down, but momentum is showing that it's going up. All right, as you can see, the candlesticks are forming because this was a live trade. All right. And another thing you can notice, the volume is fairly quiet. All right, so it's in a consolidation. What else? Okay, let's skip to what is going on. Buyers still stronger than sellers despite downward trend. Observation made through candlestick relativity comparison, all right? So, okay, so what does that mean in this area over here, right? It took the buyers only about five candlesticks to bring, um, candlesticks to bring price up, right? The amount that it took the sellers, like, maybe 10 candlesticks to bring down. So this tells me that despite the prices going down, the buyers are still stronger. All right, so this is where we opened our trade. And remember, look at this um, unusually large lower wicks at all these candlesticks over here not just over here, but also over here and over here, this tells me that is a potential buyer zone. Okay, so where the arrow is pointing within our potential buyer zone at about this price, 19117 is where we place a, an, an order for a long.
all right and where would i put my stop loss it would be ideally um if if i were to it would a conservative my first option for a stop loss would be a few pips lower than this extreme low over here but if i want to be conservative i would put it a few pips lower than the extreme low over here okay and as just by looking at this i can see that there is a um, clear resistance at about 20,300. So that is potentially where I would put my take profit. And that is definitely a more than one is to three risk reward ratio. So now I've got all my techniques converging at the same point in price. And I've also got, um, my respect with my risk reward ratio and what actually happened a few hours later, um, price actually hit our take profit. Price actually did go up and it did not hit the stop loss. And that is a lot more than a one is to three risk reward ratio. Okay. So having your um, contextual trading, knowing the story behind your trade and knowing when to open a trade, it gives you, um, it helps your psyche not panic as much, right? So as you can see, I could comfortably open this trade and to comfort my already comfortable state of mind, I even have a stop loss and a take profit. Okay, so then that makes you a very sane and safe trader. So regardless of whether you went wrong, you would only lose 1% of your um, equity, right? But in this case, I hope you can see that it is worth it to wait for those trades that are um, prime to be open, right? Don't rush in and don't um, make sure every trade is worth it, okay? So I hope from these two examples, you can see the applications of what we learned so far and um, how you can actually uh, use it and how it's, this is not just, random candle patterns and me telling you what to do, right? I hope you can understand it from the core in itself and see the results as it play out. Okay, so be disciplined with your practices. Um, try to write down your analysis because that's definitely what helped me. Okay, and I'm not giving you 100% guarantee that you'll be right all the time, but I think what's more important is knowing what to do when you are, when you accept that you are wrong. Okay, so a lot of it has to do with your psychology in trading. And it is what our CEO Jonas always talks about. We will speak more about um, trading psychology in the next meeting. And we are going to dive further and deeper into price action analysis. So in the days that we don't have these trainings, I really hope that you go to the charts and see look at it for yourself because live trading and learning in theory is very very different so the thing that i try to do to give you as close as much of, as the experience is to record my live trades and show you what actually plays out and the analysis that i've used so far all right so um with that said Thank you all for being here. And that is all I have for you today for today's module. Again, we spoke about technical analysis, price momentum, simple divergence. Um, we learned how to an analyze and interpret candlesticks. And now we know what market manipulation is and how to remedy that. Okay, so I will um, pass the stage to Christiania and Thank you again to everyone. Christiane, are you here? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, you can be seen in here. All right, so thank you so much, Alexis, for that, um, your trading, trading sessions as always. And, uh, her next session will be on Monday, because today is Saturday. Yes, so her next session will be on Monday. And uh, do look out for that because uh, as usual, she is doing a continuation. Okay, so um, right now I'll be doing um, 
uh, the CryptoBox Exchange walkthrough, we have decided to make this modular. Okay, so I'm just going to share my screen really quickly right now. I think uh, Alexis, can I just double, can you just help me double check if my screen can be seen? Yep, it can be seen. Okay. All right. So um, uh, welcome to the CryptoBox Exchange, the modular version. So we have actually uh, split this into different modules. So um, since the market is closed, I will not be able to go through the second uh, the second topic for the second module and as well as module three. So we're gonna, you're gonna have to wait. Uh, we're gonna have to wait until next uh, Monday uh, for me to go through that. So I'm just really gonna quickly go through the first module once again for those who actually weren't here the first time uh, I did this. Okay, so this is actually just a walkthrough on how to use the CryptoBox Exchange uh, interface. Okay. Uh, this is um, prioritizing the people who actually don't know how to trade yet and also uh, to who are still familiarizing themselves with the platform. Okay, so first, so first and foremost, we're going to go to CryptoBox.Exchange. And once you go there, you're going to sign up and then uh, log in after you've signed up. So uh, CryptoBox.Exchange, this is how it looks like, the landing page. Just click on sign up right here. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm not really sure why it's doing that, but okay, so um why am I not allowed to? This has actually never happened before. I'm not really sure why it's doing this. Okay, so, um, I have another window here that's already open, so I'm gonna try to share that one instead. This one. Okay, so once you click on sign up, this is the page that you will see. Actually, <clears throat> sorry, the login cabinet, login to cabinet. If you do not have an account, you just register after you register and then you just um, log in your details. So I'm just gonna log into the one that I already have. Um, hold on, uh, give me a second. I, I'm not sure if they're working on something on the website, maybe that's why. Right. Okay, so it looks like um, the CryptoBox Exchange, 
oh, sorry, I wasn't told this, but I was, I'm just told that they're doing some sort of update on the website. So uh, maybe that's why I'm unable to access it. So I don't think I will be able to do the walkthrough today, but anyway, it's actually just the sign up login dashboard. And uh, I'm just going. I was just going to show you what was on the on the dashboard. And I could. I can actually only do up until the introduction to the interface. But uh, it looks like I don't think I'll be able to do that. So, um, but um, uh, it's a, a little unfortunate. Uh, so I actually won't be able to open the CryptoVox Exchange website today because they are doing an update. So um, we'll just uh, cut this part out for today uh, because uh, this will also be go uh, this this um, the CryptoVox Exchange walkthrough will also be done during the Zoom meetings, and uh, it will be better also if I can actually uh, do this when the market is open so that you can see uh, live trades. Okay. So uh, we're just gonna go back to Alexis, all right? So um, this uh, this uh, this time is for everybody to actually ask questions. If uh, any questions that you have for Alexis's um, session just now. So um, Alexis, if you're around, uh, would you like to come back and uh, wait for any questions that anybody has? Sure. This, um, we, I'm, I'm sorry if I rushed through the first topic really quickly. Um, I thought I would run out of time, but yep. So if anything wasn't clear, do ask me um, the questions. It's very, very important for me that you understand um, what is going on and how I can better explain it. Um, all right, I'd just like to share. Uh, Jasper actually um, asked me if uh, it is ideal to use ATR in setting the stop loss. And I actually answered that I personally have not tried using ATR to set stop loss. All right, so for those of you who um, uh, have tried or you know what your findings are, what your experience are with it. So that's that's the very interesting thing about learning how to trade is um, we're always open to learning new ways and how to better ourselves. So for sure, I will look into um, ATR and um, I think apparently it's a way to calculate where you can place your stop loss actually. So yep, and Jasper, do let me know what your findings and your experience are with um, using ATR to set stop loss. All right. And no questions for anyone? Yes, Jasper, one more question. Thank you, thank you. So Jasper, how can I help? I think if you, uh, when you encountered the fake structure, can I still do a trade? Yep, exactly. Okay, so um, let me just. Look at the here. I hope you guys can see my screen. Give me a moment. Okay, so example, right? This was our, our example of the fake structure over here. Of course, you can still do a trade. But the only thing of knowing a fake structure is not to um, fall for it. So example, right? This is your fake structure. And then the large traders are trying to make you think that price is going to go up. So once you identify that it is a fake structure, it looks like it's going to go up, but it is a fake structure. So you can trade, but instead of opening a long 
clearly you will open a short instead. All right, so that is the usefulness of knowing a real market structure from a fake one. Okay, so just because it's a fake structure doesn't mean that you can't trade. It just means that it might not be going the way that you think it's going based on volatility itself. Does that make sense? So actually all the more reason that you should open a trade here because example, once you know that this is fake market structure, right? When price shot up over, oh, sorry, you can't see my presentation. Okay, here, I think you can see it now. Are you guys seeing the, the fake structure chart? And just Okay, now I think this is it. All right, so yes, what I was talking about, um, right, so all the more reason you should open a trade because once you identify that this is a fake market structure, structure that this is fake buying power going up, if you opened a short over here, that would have been ideal. All right, so instead of writing along, um, a, so we'll, we'll be kind of call these whales, right? This large volatility candlesticks, they're like whales. So knowing market manipulation, right? Instead, you ride on to the whales because we are the retail traders and these are the whales. So if you ride on their backs, we don't necessarily need as much um, buying or selling power that they have, but then we can still um, profit off of it as much as they do. Okay, so if you don't fall into their trap of reverse psychology and you know the direction that they are going to go, in this example, they're going downwards. Right. So once you identify this as a fake market structure, you won't be fooled by this strong volatility in the buyers. And instead of opening a long, you would be one step ahead and you would open a short. OK, and that is you would have been able to profit more than 40, a 40 change in price. And that is a lot of pips. OK, so I hope I answered your question. OK. Okay. Uh, Nana, y'all asked how to sign up in the exchange. First, you go straight to www.cryptobox.exchange. All right. And in every Zoom meeting, Christiana actually goes through a very detailed um, walkthrough on how to sign up. But as we understand right now, it's going through maintenance. Can you please send your next actual live trading video? All right. Do you mean a future live trading or do you want me to send you the the video I showed just now? All right. If you guys do appreciate the live recorded trading videos that I make, I can I will make a point to do so. All right. Sure thing. Um, that will probably be still um, next week because the market is closed um, for sa Saturday and Sunday. So hopefully I'll be able to show that to you maybe by next Thursday or something. Thursday, Saturday, yeah, around there. Okay, if there are no further questions, it's about um, 10 minutes past eight. I think we can close this uh, training today because I think there's no more questions. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so uh, so um, so according to Alexis, it looks like there are no more questions already. So uh, thank you everybody for coming to the trading training, and I hope that uh, we are able to. Um, actually give you the, uh, you'll be able to use these tools uh, to start trading um, soon.
So uh, the next training will be Monday. All right. So hopefully for those who are coming to the Zoom tomorrow, we'll see you tomorrow. And if not, in the next training. So uh, have a happy Saturday, everybody. Okay, uh, someone, Becky actually just asked, um, Alexis, are you still around? Yes, I'm still here. Uh, uh, Becky just asked if you can do a market recap for the weekend on XAU, USD and post it to the group. All right, sure, sure. A market recap of what happened in that week or um, would you prefer yeah. a forecast analysis? Oh, uh, he said he set up market recap for the weekend. Forecast. Forecast next week. Okay, sure thing, sure thing. No problem. Okay, so if that is it, no more questions. Uh, we're going to close the Zoom and we'll see you in the next Zoom meeting tomorrow or Monday. Thank you, everybody. Oh, uh, people are asking how to join the group. Um, hold on. I think this is the. Sorry, G Gandhi Emma asked, how can I get a replay of the trade? Are you referring to the video or um, which replay of the trade are you referring to? Oh, oh, the re recording of this training. Um, are we are we uploading the recording of this training or? Yeah, I think we are uploading these actually, but uh, that's the thing. I'm not really sure where these are going to be uploaded to, but um, I think it's going to be on a YouTube channel. Uh, yep, it's going to be uh, uploaded unlisted, so you can only access it if you have the link. So do give us some time to upload it over there and then we'll send you a link of the recorded training. Oh, all right, all right. So um, Gandhi Emma has raised a concern that the daily, uh, their daily schedule does not permit them to follow the live training. So, um, all right, uh, maybe you could drop your emails in the chat and then we will send you the YouTube links to the recorded versions of these trainings. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So uh, guys, I think maybe, yes, drop your emails in here. I will uh, take them down. And yes, this is actually the name of the channel in YouTube. It's called Cerebrum Channel. Okay, that's, that's spelled wrongly there. Maybe you can open it up on your end, Chen, and share the screen. Okay, okay. All right, so uh, let me just uh, try to redirect you to where it is. Uh, okay, let me just look for the channel link and I'll drop it in here right now in the chat because uh, it's actually pretty difficult to find this channel on YouTube if you just type it in. So, uh, Okay, just in case I'm going to uh, collect the emails for those who have dropped it.
Are you able to find the channel? Uh, I'm asking for the channel link instead because uh, it's really hard to find it on YouTube. Like it, it's not one of the first few channels that actually comes up. So. All right, uh, Jasper has sent the link actually. Okay, I found it. Okay, yeah. All right, so um, this is a channel. It's called Cerebrum. Let me just share it. Uh, I actually just, if you do want to search this, I just search Cerebrum channel crypto box. This is how the channel looks like. So this is where uh, I think the videos for the um, uh, the trading training there, as you can see, there's a trading training module three here. Uh, I think this also still has to be rearranged. So we're going to arrange this um, soon if we have the, once we have the time to actually clean this up a little. But yeah, there are already trading training modules here the uh, recorded from before. So this is a channel. Okay, so uh, for those who can't uh, attend the live trading trainings, you can come on over to this and review them yourselves at your own time. All right, so if there are any more questions. If there are no more questions, we are gonna close this Zoom. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. They were asking how to join the the group. The I think the group chat. Yeah, uh, I'm actually confirming which group. Actually, hold on. I think uh the group. Where 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 are you gonna be uh sending in the forecast? Um okay, wait, okay. So um we're going to create your remote trading. So uh there's going to be a GC, there's gonna be a new group chat that's going to be created, I think, for this group where you can view the forecast and everything. So there's uh in WhatsApp, so there's uh there's no group yet, apparently, because we have our a uh, group's kind of scattered all over the place, so I'm not really sure which group they're talking, but I'm just told that uh, they're going to be creating one, a separate one, um, next week. Okay, so in this separate group chat, uh, in the what's in WhatsApp, this is where we're going to send all the forecasts and also the re the re uh, market recap for the weekend. Okay, so uh, we will let you know once we have this WhatsApp group created already. All right, so there's uh so as of now there are there's no um there's no GC yet. Okay, so I will let you know probably on Monday. So if nobody has any more questions. All right, so I think that's it for today's trading training. Uh we'll see you at Zoom meeting tomorrow or another the next session on Monday. Okay, thank you, everybody. Goodbye.